Good morning. Good morning. Our service this morning begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. And also you can find our service in your service bulletin. Today we celebrate the 15th Sunday of our Pentecost season. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Show you the goodness, Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are true. 
reading from the letter of James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor, you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. It is not the rich who oppress you. It is not they who drag you into court. It is not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you. You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For who, whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works, can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and, and yet you do nothing to supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand and let's sing together in 178. 178. <laughs>
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice, but a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, the Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demons out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his finger to his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Epitha, that is, be open. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Enough for all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In today's gospel, we find Jesus and his disciples uh, nearly a hundred miles off course in Galilee as they journeyed to Tyre and Sidon in Syria. Well, they were deep in Gentile country and at the very heart of pagan land. It has been suggested that the Jesus tour was taking a well-needed break from the ministry to the Jews and they just finished the feeding of the 5,000. Perhaps they thought that Jesus' notoriety would not be so recognized in this part of the country. However, as Jesus entered a particular place, a certain Syrophoenician woman did recognize Jesus and began to make a plea at his feet to heal her sick daughter. It is clear that in Matthew's account of this story that this woman was bold, outspoken, and persistent. Bold, outspoken, and persistent. Now that would pretty much describe Edie, my boy's mother, her <laughs> posture, when she was uh, taking the position of taking care of her uh, boys, of protecting her boys. Even at 4'10", and hands on her hips, I had seen her raise up two feet in height to go eye to eye with a doctor or with an administrator or teacher that needs to get with the program of taking care of our sons in some better way. God bless her for that. I never underestimate the power of a mother through their desire and their tenacity 
and their persistence to protect or come to the aid to their children. The Syrophoenician woman had really three strikes against her as she boldly approached Jesus. First of all, she was a Gentile, an unclean race, a pagan. And then secondly, she was a woman, a second-class citizen, but not just a woman, but a feisty, outspoken, persistent woman. And then thirdly, well, apparently she must have caught Jesus at a bad time because he was not in a good mood, at least as it seems. Jesus' initial response to the woman, which does appear very degrading, since he referred to her and her children as dogs. That would be one of the most talked about among theologians. And I've got to tell you the truth, the least talked about between podium and pew. <laughs> uh, priests and preachers will go out of their way not to preach on this today. They'll, in fact, they look at the gospel and they say, well, I think I'm going to preach on a psalm today. <laughs> or maybe that beautiful epistle. <laughs> but let's take a look at this seemingly, at least at first glance, harsh response of Jesus. There are really two versions of how to interpret Jesus' response. The first version is that Jesus was satirizing in sort of a tongue-in-cheek fashion the racial and social prejudices of the Pharisees and many of the Jewish people, including his own disciples. The use of dogs to refer to Gentiles was a common racial slur among the Jews. But rabbis, God bless them, then and today, they have been known for their love of verbal fencing matches and their pure wit to illustrate, the creative wit to illustrate a point. My friend Rabbi Michael often uses uh, theoretical or even theatrical wit and drama to make a point. You know, even though I've had training in debate and have uh, uh, participated in many debates, in fact, have won some, I would never go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rabbi Michael. <laughs> he is smart as a whip, and his wit and creativity uh, in language is just amazing. So Jesus, his remarks may not have been intended to embarrass the woman, or to condemn her, but to provide a teaching moment for those around, illustrating this kind of prejudice that most people would have probably said to her. It may have been a test for those listening, for the disciples, and perhaps even for the woman herself. Now, the second version is that as a human being, we have to remember that Jesus was fully human and fully divine, but as a human being, Jesus may have been hungry, grieving, tired, attempting to rest when this woman comes out of nowhere and suddenly has these immediate demands on him. So he initially reacts from his cultural programming and dismisses the woman until, of course, her persistence, her logic and wit prevail prevail Jesus to a more divine encounter. So, is it the clever Jesus version? The divinely inspired Jesus version from the very first? Or the more human, what I call grumpy Jesus version? Well, I tend to believe the first because it's ever so consistent with how Jesus uh, handled himself and also his very clever and sometimes very sharp wit, particularly against the Pharisees and other folks. It's very consistent that it would be a teaching moment. However, we have to remember that Jesus was also 
fully human. We can't totally discount that he might have been a little bit grumpy. It would be easier or even convenient to totally discount the grumpy Jesus version. But again, we need to be careful not to totally minimize the fully human sides of Jesus. But whatever version that you take, in the end, the woman's faith and her, really, her logic, her logic and her will and wit and persistence is admired and noticed by Jesus and he extends his healing grace to this daughter, even from afar. Now in the woman's rebuttal, she uses Jesus' own analogy to say to Jesus and to say to us, in God's kingdom, there is plenty of food and grace for everyone, not just the Jews, who Jesus was originally talking about. She reminds Jesus of his previous message. In fact, we just heard it last week. This previous message to the Jews where he radically challenges these purity laws by telling them that the externals are less important than the internal. The heart is more important. And the traditions are less important than the two great love commandments. And basically, she says to Jesus, are you going to judge me by my externals or judge me by my heart? <coughs> now, I can just see Jesus with a twinkle in his eye and maybe a little turned up smile on his lips. As he says, oh, that's good. <laughs> that's a good one. You go, girl. Woman, you've got faith. You passed the test. And your daughter's already healed. In today's gospel, the Syrophoenician woman represents <coughs> the inclusion of Gentiles into the kingdom of God. It is a story that embraces the moment in which the kingdom of God breaks open and begins more inclusion. A moment in which we are all reminded that no one is outside of the embrace and grace of God. The woman came to Jesus trusting by faith that God's mercy is not limited to a particular guest list. In this case, just Israel. But all were invited and all will be fed by God's grace. God cares for us all. He knows our hearts. He knows our guilt, our needs, our desires. And he wants to bring us out of our deafness and help our tongues to raise our voices in song and thanksgiving with hope and praise because of this kind of grace. In today's gospel, Jesus challenges his listeners of the day, his disciples, his own disciples, and to be sure he challenges us to reconsider our prejudices, our judgments, and exclusivity. Jesus is challenging us in our own homes, in the office place, yes, even on the golf course, while with our friends, or whenever we set boundaries in any situation, even boundaries between nations, boundaries between cultures. Races, socioeconomic positions. The gospel story points to the reoccurring theme, and it is reoccurring throughout the gospels. I overheard a parishioner one time say, 
You know, Father Terry really says that exclusivity word an awful lot. <laughs> Guilty as charged. I certainly do because the gospel talks about it time and time and time again. The gospel story again points to the reoccurring things. And especially in our parables. The inclusive nature of God's love, his acceptance, his grace, certainly his salvation in the kingdom of God. Do we exclude those other people? Those different from us? Do we send them away like stray dogs? Finally, this gospel reading prepares us for our communion table, really. In our pre-communion prayer, in right one, I love this prayer. It's called the Prayer of the Humble Access, and it prepares our hearts for communion. I wish it was in right two. You know the word since we practice here at St. Philip, right one and right two. It begins, we do not presume to come to thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. The fact is, good folks, there are no crumbs served at God's table. God does not invite us to eat crumbs underneath his table, but we are all invited guests to a banquet feast on top of this table of abundance. Let us have ears to hear and a voice to speak of God's wisdom and truth in this Holy Scripture. May it be so with us. Let us now stand and say together the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is the outline of our Christian faith. It is found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer and also in your service bulletin. Together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Yeah. 
form three. It can be found in your uh, service leaflet or on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. Remembering especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope Francis of the Roman Church, Michael, our presiding bishop, the bishops and ministers of the Episcopal Church in the Anglican community, Phoebe, our bishop, and Father Terry, our priest. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. Remembering especially Joe, our president, Bill, our governor, and all mayors of Shelby County and the surrounding areas. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Remembering especially Karen, Dwayne, Ed, Dawn, Ann, Blaine, the Holmes family, Father Colenso, Rudolph, Larry, Ned, and Jason. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Don Holmes. Let light and shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Emmanuel Lagrange. We pray for the West Tennessee Haiti Partnership Mission. We pray for the village mission in Liberia, Africa. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for peace among all nations. We pray for peace in our own nation. We pray for the protection and comfort of all those who serve this country in foreign and domestic lands, especially Jacob Stevens and Trevor Hall. We pray for Christians that are being persecuted throughout the world. The altar flowers are given to the glory of God by Joni Posey in honor of John Posey's birthday. Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating a birthday, especially Virginia Lewis, Rebecca Holly, John Posey, Steve Shelton, James Pitcock, and Mary Cox. Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating an anniversary this week, especially Donnell and Melba Zanella. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We continue to pray for those affected by the natural disasters. Thanks for all the blessings in this life. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Our confession can be found on page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer and also in your service bulletin. 
together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you into eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Peace, everyone. see you all here. Uh, welcome to this service. We also, I want to uh, mention we have a very special guest today, our guest organist. Her name is Carolyn Mason, and uh, she was handpicked by Richard uh, <laughs> since uh, Dr. Cowley was going to be out of town uh, for this Sunday. Uh, he invited uh, Carolyn to be with us, and we are delighted to have you here. And thank you for helping, helping us out. Please show her the hospitality that we're known for. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, again, our healing service at 1210 on Wednesdays, a special one. Also, uh, our daily bread meditation booklets are, are out uh, uh, for the months of September, October, and November. Uh, you can find those in the back of the church and also in the foyer. And also, our Anglican Digest came in. So the fall issue of the Anglican Digest are here. Many of you have responded with uh, uh, really very positive remarks and comments about it. Uh, so pick up your fall issue. Uh, they're complimentary copies for you. Uh, and again, they can be found in the back of the church and also in the foyer. I love reading those uh, on Saturday mornings, especially when I've got a little bit more time, they're not—they're not long. They're just—and and they're not daily, so you don't have to add something daily. But if you just read it once a week, then I think it would be very edifying for you. And it's a little bit more relevant to the Anglican Church, which is kind of nice. do want to remind you that this is the first Sunday of the month, which is designated as the uh, St. Philip Discretionary Fund Sunday, and that's where you give, hopefully generously, uh, uh, to the discretionary fund. Now, you, you don't have to give just for just today. You can send a check or bring money in at another time, but that is a very uh, uh, powerful ministry that you all have here that I, uh, you know, administer on your behalf. Um, but it, it is really a powerful ministry in that it helps people in our parish, in the city, in our nation, and even globally as uh, I'm able to give to foreign missions as uh, well. So please continue, as you have in the past, uh, to give generously to that really, at this time, most active ministry that we have. May I make a comment? Yes. If you are so inclined 
to donate, particularly like with the Ida aftermath, please donate directly to the charity. Do not do it through Facebook. Oh. They either take a cut or they can hold the funds for two to three months and that money needs to be given immediately. So, I mean, if it's for relief and development, it's got a button particularly for either relief. So, thank you, Mary. That way. Mary is saying, please be careful if you so have the heart to give to the recent storm of Ida, uh, to be careful about Facebook contributions. In fact, the Episcopal Church has uh, its own uh, uh, sort of charitable giving. Uh, uh, the Episcopal Relief and Development Relief and Development <laughs> uh, and you can go to that website or you can go to the Episcopal Church website and find that particular site and uh, if you give money to them I can assure you that they will make sure that that gets to the correct place and they are highly rated by the way yeah. if you go through those rating systems to see who's really you know, keeping the money and spending the money, they've always been highly rated. Thank you, Mary, for that. Uh, and of course, that's an ongoing ministry that they have uh, throughout our nation and also throughout the world. Yeah. That uh, link is in our, is on our webpage that, oh. uh, for the uh, diocese webpage oh, what that we it? have on our okay. website. So you can also go to our web webpage and find that as well. Thank you, Mary. No, that's a that's a good warning and also a good direction uh, to give it. On behalf of the men's club, I want to uh, invite every everyone, every man, to attend the men's club meeting this Thursday at six thirty. Uh, un unfortunately, they've had to cancel two meetings, and so it's very important that we that we have this meeting. They're going to have the election of officers, uh, so please do come and support. Uh, really, the men's club is the ministry of this church, so please come and support that ministry. 6:30 uh, in the parish hall. Are there any other announcements that we might have? these days we're going to have a mass burning party. How about that? <laughs> God, Father of all, we give thanks for another year of these lives shared in human love and in your love that never fails. Bless this couple in all that is yet to come, confirming and strengthening in them the vows which they have made to one another in your name. Keep them faithful until they must part in death and bring them together at last into eternal life. Amen. I bless you with this holy oil in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I bless you with this holy oil in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. <laughs> Remember the words of our Lord Jesus, it is more blessed to give and to give of ourselves than to receive. <laughs>
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name.
Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace of the Lord. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us our peace. Reciting the prayer of humble access today, we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord. So to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
for those of you that could not be here today, and for all of those that we have prayed for, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep them to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord.
And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now for the rest of this Sabbath day, for the rest of your upcoming week, during our great Pentecost season, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's do it.